Hello everyone, in today's video, we're going to be showing you how you can edit, save, create, and load flight plans on the Beechcraft Starship by Black Square. Let's get started. First things first, uh, we're sitting inside this uh, lovely 1980s cabin. Everything's all set. We have external power all mounted on here and everything is ready to rock. We just need to put in a flight plan and get on our way. Now, one of the wild things about this aircraft is the fact that our flight planning system is actually fairly sophisticated. But it has a couple of little quirks that will probably make you a little insane. Uh, you'll see exactly what I mean by that. Oh no, my oxygen's not armed. So first things first, uh, we're going to talk about the CDU. The CDU is this little guy here, and this allows us to basically display data as well as to enter data. The way this works is the buttons on the outside correspond to the items in the middle. The buttons across all down here correspond to the different things on the screen. If I want to change modes, for example, I can come up here and I can press arc map, for example, and press HSI, whatever I need to do for my flight. Now, when I'm entering flight plans in this aircraft, I usually like to kind of do it two different ways at the same time. I use this for the purposes of entering the waypoints, and I use this as a way to preview my flight. Now, what you probably notice is we have a present position map and a plan map. So what I'm going to do is go to plan map, and I'm going to click down here where it says display. Now, if this is too messy for you, you can shut off some options you don't need to see, and it makes it a little bit easier to see. I also appreciate the fact that you can press the display button right there. Once this is displayed, we can zoom in and out. You can see we're hanging out at a Hartford, Connecticut right there, and I can zoom back out again. And you can get a pretty good look of uh, basically the whole region of New England here, which is actually pretty wild here. So now if you want to open a library you've saved, I should say, open a route that you've saved before, simply come up here, select the name of the route like this, and what you'll notice here is as soon as you hit that button and you go back to flight plane, nothing happens. Now I'll show you again. I'll go back to my index, route library, stop. Do you notice that there's a little number right here? This number corresponds to the place in memory of that particular flight plan. Now this slot here, a root in position one, needs to be loaded directly. You can't just click on it here. Uh, of course, you're very tempted to come over here. Uh, one of the things we could do is we could do 01, and basically go like that. All it's going to do is do the exact same thing. Another thing to note is you can erase your roots right here if you need to do so. And again, that is not in your computer. Now, if I want to actually load the root from memory, it says enter root number or waypoint. So if I were to come in here and do 01 and then press enter, it'll say, did you want to load this waypoint in the normal order? reverse or cancel. Let's just say we want to do normal order. Now, if you noticed that memory location one now gets loaded into our little screen here and you can see I've got myself a nice little flight taking us up to New Bedford, 110 bucks to land there, by the way, because it's from the Boston sphere. So the cool thing here is this is good to go. I can actually use this flight. Everything's ready to rock. But let's say I want to erase that flight plan. Uh, keep in mind, flight plans are in memory until you tell them not to be. It's a little different than like a Boeing. So let's go pick a random waypoint. I'll pick Gardner here. And I'm just going to say erase flight plan. It's like, are you really sure? Yes. And you can see, blip, just like that, it is gone. Kablammy, just like that. So now let's say we want to enter a flight plan. Now, entering flight plans are kind of cool. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that we can do it. Uh, there's some ways I find easier, some ways I find a little more complicated. It kind of depends on the uh, what you're trying to achieve here. So the first thing it wants us to do is enter a waypoint. This will always be your starting waypoint. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the screen, and I'm going to type in my starting waypoint using the keyboard. So we're going to start in at Hartford. I'm going to press Enter. It's going to say, do you want to take off from Hartford Airport? Is this the one you wanted? Uh, yeah, I do. As a matter of fact, if you come down here where it says display runways, you can even pick the runway you want to take off from. And as soon as you hit that, by the way, it adds it. So you can see Hartford Runway 20. Now, if you want to enter the rest of your flight plan, you can go ahead and dial them in one at a time. Now, let's say I don't want to use this keyboard trick. Uh, let's say there's another method I want to use. What else can we do to enter a waypoint? The joystick. Now, if I grab this little handle, you can notice that I can drag this little cursor around on the screen, and you can actually hold your cursor over something and then press the Enter button. Now, if you do that, it loads it into memory for you. And if you take a look here, Bath just got added. Isn't that cool? So let's say we want to add another waypoint. So I'm going to go zoom out a little bit here. I'm definitely not going to use the uh, joystick. That'll make me slightly insane. Let's say we want to add Ean onto this one. But this time, I'm going to do it the old school way. You'll notice I have a little numpad down here. And if I press this thing, this is DEF2 once, it says two. That doesn't help us at all. Let's say we want the letter E. Just come down here to letter, push it. Ha ha. So we're going to push two, letter, letter. Uh, let's see here. We need uh, this one, letter, letter, E. And I press enter. And you can see like that, it's like, is this the one you wanted? Of course, it's the one I wanted. I press enter, and you can see our flight plan instantly updates to include that. Now, let's say we're going over to Manchester today. So I'm going to come up here. I'll do my regular computer keyboard because it's just quicker. Enter. Is this what I want? Yes. 
Now, when you're done entering each one of your waypoints for your flight plan, you can then press the end FIPPLE button. As soon as you do that, you now have your entire flight plan ready to go. Now, there's a lot of things we can do from here. Let's say, for example, we wanted to uh, change Ian with Gardner here. So if I come up to Ian and press the little button right here, there's a button that says Replace Waypoints. Now, if I click on that, we can actually look at how cheap this is. I can actually just grab the thing like this, go like that, and press Enter if I want it to be a little goofy like that. Sometimes this doesn't grab well, and if it doesn't grab well, you can always enter it manually. But you can see here, we go up to Bar uh, Bath, we go to Gardner, we go over to Manchester, just like that that quickly and that easily. Now let's say we want to delete a waypoint. Let's say I say Gardner is now redundant. I can press on the button next to Gardner and I can just come to here where it says delete waypoint. Now if I press that, it's gone. It gets blasted out of my flight plan here. Now let's say I want, whoops, I actually wanted to put Ian back in. How am I gonna get Ian back in? Well, the easiest way to do this is to find the previous waypoint, which we VAF, click on it, and then press insert waypoint after. Now, if I press this button, I can just type in uh, Ian again, and basically, oh, a Dean, that could be interesting too. And I'll go ahead and press enter. This is the one you want, enter. And you can see that it automatically modified our flight plan for us. Now, one of the things I wanna point out while we're here is if you wanna add an approach to a flight plan, approaches are a little funky. So if I were to come up here and press the approach button, you are immediately picking the approach for the destination airport. So for example, if I wanted to do, I don't think there's our, our unfortunately there's, ah, there's a two, we could do ILS for three, five. So if I click this now, it'll say which one of the ones did we want to use? And the cool thing here is I can click on Pellin and it'll actually preview the approach on the right there. So if I want to press this one, it can say, is this what you want? I can say no change. Notice as soon as you pick one, the party is now started. You will see that everything is already pre-programmed in here, ready to go, which is actually kind of a pain if you ask me, because you can see everything's basically ready to go and it instantly imported. There's no like catching to see if that's what you meant. So it's important that when you do hit that, if you need to delete that approach, you have to hit that delete approach button. Otherwise it's gonna mess with you. Trust me, you'll do it about 10 times. All right, let's go pick another one. We'll do ILS for three, five, and we'll do shows. Yeah, shows isn't any better, but again, you can have a pretty good idea of what's going on. So you've taken your time, you've entered your flight plan, and you want to see how your flight plan looks. This is when using the screen on the right really, really helps. So if we come down here where it says menu, I'll actually skip the menu, press index, and you'll see a thing that says FMS. If you click that, there's a button that says progress. If I press that button, voila, you can see a beautiful, beautiful diagram that shows you all of your different components here, your ground speed, it's gonna do your endurance, and you can even go up and down to see everything that you've got planned on your flight as well as all the individual times. Now, here comes the trickiest part of all flight planning, and that unfortunately is uh, saving it. Now watch this. I'm gonna go over to my index page here again, and you're gonna see root library. To save, this is really goofy. What you're going to do is you're going to pick a blank one. It's going to say enter root number. And what I'm going to do is 01 and press enter. You're going to see this thing that goes, huh? And then if I go back to my library, voila, you could see it is now sitting there waiting for you, uh, depending on how you chose to do that. And again, if I want to erase that root, I can go there like that and basically erase it. But the cool thing is this is still here saved for us. So one of the cool things, like I said, is that it has all that functionality in here. And again, depending on how you set it up and how you save it, gives you an idea of how you do it. Now, one of the things I wanna give you a quick little warning about here, and everybody does this once. If you were to come in here real quick here, and I do zero one, uh, this would open up my other flight plan. I come in here, and if you were to do zero zero enter, you'll notice nothing happens. So I'll come in here again, do zero one. Whoop. I just wanna show you what'll happen if you're not careful, enter. Now, if you want to change the name of this, you have to press this arrow here. So if I don't want that to have that name, I can now come in here and type a new name. This was Hartford to MHT, I think was the one we called this one. Enter. Now, when you go over here, you'll notice how it has overwritten that. So you have to be very, very, very careful when you're erasing and deleting these things. This seems to be kind of an ongoing thing. So I'd almost say skip a few when you go to do one of these, because otherwise it's going to do all sorts of nasty stuff where it's going to actually overwrite your flight plans. So be careful when you do that. So I can't say that enough times. All right. So our flight plan is all selected. Everything is all ready to go. We go back to our index here, our plan map. Everything is beautifully displayed here. Let's talk about the FMS modes real quick while I'm here. So let's say now we actually want to fly that flight plan. 
So if I wanted to, I could come here to Arc and go to Arc Map. And this map probably looks familiar to those of you who've seen, you know, Boeing 747s or Airbus A320s. You've seen this style thing before. We can adjust our range right here so we can see what our flight looks like very, very clearly. And you can see exactly just how darn handy this whole thing is as far as that process goes. So let's see here. We're going to take off. We're going to go to Barnes, just like we promised Ian. We're going to do all of our business up there and be pretty much ready to go for our particular flight here. And that looks great. And again, I can come over here. I can go back to my index page. I can set my FMS. I can see my uh, progress. And it makes it very, 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 very clear. Uh, one last thing you can do too, is if you actually come over here, you can actually change the navigational source. So for example, if I wanted to do VOR1, you can of course adjust the source depending on what it is. Actually, it's VOR1. This is the one I wanted. There we go. FMS1. So you actually get a little arrow here. So if for some reason, the screen dies on you because it overheats, uh, which it will at some point, I'm sure, um, you still always have that FMS arrow basically providing you what you need for successful flights. Enjoy.